Jacqueline is in Phoenix. Hey, Jacqueline, welcome to the Entree Leadership Podcast. Hi, Dave. Um, I have a mobile swim lesson company, and I have Wait a minute, stop, stop, stop. You have a mobile what? Oh, a mobile swim lesson company. Mobile swim lesson company. So you go yes, to people's go- houses that have pools. Yep, they're backyard pools. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I've got 10 contractors as swim instructors, and we made, uh, we grossed last year 61000 Um, And what I'm trying to figure out a little bit more is how I enforce a cancellation policy and a fee with that, with grace and kindness, without being taken advantage of for same-day cancellations at the same time. Hmm. Is it more emotional that it happens and it's just a pain, or is it actually starting to be large enough that it's a serious financial problem? It's As I'm expanding, it's getting to be a bigger problem. So it was probably about 10% of my revenue last year. Ooh, that's not okay. That's not okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's, peop- that's people being butts. Okay. Now, yep. <laughs> uh, so here's what you got to do. The, the, around, when, around Ramsey and when we're teaching entrepreneurial leadership, we always tell people when you have a collections problem, and that's sort of what this is, what you have is not a collections problem. You don't have a cancellation problem. Uh, you have a marketing and uh, communications problem with your customer. So when they sign up, you need to tell them on the front end what your policy is. And then there's lots of grace. Okay. We do uh, that right now. Okay. Mm-hmm. What do you tell them your policy is? So our policy is you have to give us 24 hours notice and there's no fee if you do that. But if you give us less than 24 hours notice, then we will charge you. Okay. How many of them are less than, we, tw- are you, are you asking me about what happens if they're less than 24 or more than 24? Yeah. So we, we get people and I've noticed that some folks, they don't care. They'll just cancel anyway. And they're fine with that. And they don't complain, but then we have the other half of them that are pretty squeaky and are upset if we tell them that we're going to enforce that policy. Oh, wait, 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 wait. But we told you up front. Why would you squeak? Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is the deal. If you if you cancel, now you know on an extreme situation. I mean, your your mother died and you're leaving town to go to her funeral. Oh, sure, uh, I can do that. Okay, right. Mm-hmm. But your your you know, your child burped and they, de- and you decide you're going to helicopter in and they don't want to burp in the pool. Nah. <laughs> nah. And that's what this is. This is people being inconsiderate to you. The squeaky ones need oh. to leave as customers. Okay. You need to say it's not, it's not, there's nothing grace and ungraceful that you told them up front. If you cancel within 24 hours and here's all you got to say, we're small business people. All of these contractors depend on this income. I have to take care of my folks that do the lessons. Little, little, uh, you know, uh, Tiffany that comes to your house and teaches your kids, she depends on this money. And, and when you just cancel, I have to take care of Tiffany anyway. So I can't do this. I'm, I'm so sorry. But, yeah, you're going to be charged. And if you don't want to go with us anymore, that's okay, too. But that's what it is. No, that's not ungraceful. They're the ones that are ungraceful. I would have zero... If they want to leave, I'd have zero problem with them leaving. If they squawk, if they squawk, what I would say to them is, you know what? This might not be working for all of us. So the way my program works, we sell package deals. Yeah. So they get a discount for committing to more lessons. Mm-hmm. At that point, are we looking at refunding them, do you think? Or like, how, how do we handle that side? You, know, well, I, 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 you could just say, listen, it, it, we told you up front, this is what this is. This is not, you know. I have to take care of these contractors. They're, they're, they're on, I, they, they depend on these for, for food. They depend on these for their income. And I have to take care of them. And so we do enforce this cancellation policy. I'm so sorry if that's a problem. If that is a real problem for you, when, this, uh, con- when our package is done, you don't have to renew. It's okay. Sounds good. And just, just let them. Here's the weird thing. If you stand up like that and threaten to not help them anymore, they're suddenly going to turn back nice as they can be because nobody stands up to these people. They just bitch and whine and moan about everything everywhere they go because people give them free stuff. That makes sense, yeah. And it's okay. And by the way, if you run off one of those occasionally, it's good for your soul. So the way we say it around here is uh, 2% of the public is crazy and should be institutionalized. 
And so when you run, when you, when you run into a two percenter, it's a good idea to fire them as a customer and even better, give them your competitor's business card and send the crazy ones to your competitor. <laughs> I'm, I'm being a little bit bombastic, but, um, because you're, you're such a nice person that this whole thing is bothering you way too much. It is. Yep. Yeah, it's like a personal thing because you come to their homes generally with their children and you're a kind person who loves what you do. You're passionate about swimming and you're in someone's home, which is a very personal experience. It's not a cold experience at the YMCA or something, right? And uh, and all of this, the relationship gets tied up into this. So when they raise up and bitch about this, it 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 hurts your feelings at a, at a, at, at a pretty heavy level. Am I wrong? That's absolutely accurate. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I think the more you enforce this and the more you clients you release that are unreasonable clients and high maintenance clients, uh, the, the better you're going to get at this and it won't become, it won't be that you're calloused or that you become cynical it's that you become more realistic about some people just can't be happy. There's another thing in business that we run into, and this kind of falls in that category. I'll throw out that because you're just, you're wonderful. Um, but yeah, you need to just, you need to say, listen, we agreed to this on the front end. I have to take care of these contractors. I'm sorry, unless it's some kind of big family emergency, we don't do refunds. And if that's a problem for you at the end of the package, we'll ju we just won't renew. We understand. And let them go. I wouldn't give them their money back for the package. And they may go, just don't come anymore and keep the money. Okay, that's fine. I'll do that. I'll be happy to keep your money. And um, now, the, the other part, the other type of person or situation that falls in this bucket for the rest of the, our listeners out there is when we're getting started and you're kind of at the second tier, you're kind of, uh, you, you've gone from treadmill to pathfinder. You've gotten your business up and running where you're not having to personally create all the income. You've got these contractors that are out there doing the income with you and you know, you're, you're servicing a lot of people. So you've hit that next stage of business. And what has to happen is you have to have a, when you're in that early stage of business, every piece of business is precious because it's the only way you stay open. You understand? Does that, does that sound familiar? Yep. There's a little bit of desperation in the early stages. Like I have to make everybody happy or I'm going to go broke because I need every one of these dimes. And that's normal. That's a good thing when you're first starting. You've gone to another level with your business, but not with your emotions. And you're still emotionally uh, uh, the, it's not, it's overstating, but you're emotionally desperate to make everybody happy. And you're not at that stage of business anymore where you can make everybody happy. Cause one thing's for sure. When you scale, you're going to find crazy. The more you scale, the more crazy you're going to find, whether it's hiring your team. Though, I mean, I got 1100 people. I got 1100 opportunities in this building for people to be pissed off at each other. The, the drama has scaled versus when I had 11 people. You know, and we don't have much of that, thank God, but we work really hard at it. Uh, so anyway, the, the thing that goes in this bucket is now you're at the stage of business where you're not desperate for every client anymore, and you need to start thinking about business. There is uh, a percentage of customers that the juice is not worth the squeeze. They cost you more in emotional bandwidth and in trouble and in maintenance. They're high maintenance people. They're not worth what they pay. And your, your life is better and your business runs more efficiently when you cut those two percenters loose. And I'm not saying you need to wholesale go in and fire everybody that objects to this. That's not what I'm saying. But you your next stage of business for you as the owner is to get comfortable with, I don't need all of these people. As a matter of fact, it's really healthy for me to not have these ones that are a lot of trouble. They're too much trouble. They're more trouble than they're worth. All of those phrases we say out there in the real world, that's what you're after. So good work. You're doing a good job, Jacqueline. You're a good person. Just hold tight. That's all I do.